Hello and good afternoon everyone. Uh, this is Evan, uh, 120, here to break down for you the layout of how I'm going to be trying to organize this, you know, free educational online course here on YouTube over the summer. It's going to be kind of a summer crash course to eventually possibly if you're interested and can follow along and you know this tickles your interest then you can ultimately find a job a full-time job being a professional dealer in the world of the poker world the little subculture where you are the dealer sitting in a the middle of a table at a large nine-handed table throwing around cards and you are the authority figure and the officiator of the game and I'm going to be doing my absolute best in a short period of time to get you prepared to ultimately maybe go out and try out for an audition and see if you can land a part-time, full-time, you know, extended job, maybe even a career for those of you who uh, enjoy it to that extent. Uh, level and this is how we're going to organize it videos are going to be uploaded and they are going to be listed as c01 underscore s1 underscore zero l02 so, something like that and what that means is like it's going to be the course one the first session the second lesson the way it's going to be formulated is through a few principles that are almost separate, you know? So there's gonna be a few principles that we're gonna focus on. And then there's gonna be a couple courses. And in each course will be a session and within each session will be uh, several lessons, okay? So this will be like a game type. This will be a fundamental kind of thing to focus on as we reverse engineer how to go throughout this learning process. So the first thing I wanted to unveil in this video, so to say, would be the first principle that we're going to do. And a lot of this is not going to make sense be in a way because I'm starting at the end. I'm reverse engineering this for you and we are going to be starting with the most relatively complicated stuff and I'm going to try to help you learn and memorize, understand how to connect those parts of your brain to uh, get the hard stuff down. So by the time we get uh, closer to the end of this crash course and are doing the easy fundamental stuff like throwing around the cards, uh, that stuff's gonna be easy, okay? But if we did all the easy stuff and then we got to all the hard stuff and your brain was like, whoa, this is too much, cannot compute. I can't believe I spent so much time learning all these mechanics and fundamental rules and stuff and my brain can't do math. So we're starting at the end. I'm going to be teaching you the way I wish I was taught, skipping some steps for you and you know, cr helping you cross the bridge holding your hand, giving you a little training wheels with an advanced spin on mathematics to uh, get you to land a job where you can be bringing home anywhere from $150 a day cash to up to like five, six hundred dollars a day cash on top of, you know, other little bonus quirks that come along with it. So right now we're going to focus on the first principle of this and that's going to be calculating the pot okay the first again we're starting with the hardest stuff so the the game we're going to focus on is a game that's becoming very popular it's called pot limit omaha plo traditionally you guys see poker that involves two cards that's texas hold'em at any point you can go all in and you know bet whatever you want there could be two dollars in the pot and you could bet two thousand dollars into that Pot Limit Omaha is different because you get four cards instead of two and you can only bet what's into the pot at one time. If you, there's $20 in the pot and you try to bet 100, the dealer's gonna say the bet is 20 because there's only $20 in the pot. With that being said, focusing on the hard stuff, we're going to focus on this principle right here, which is going to be calculating the pot. So when you go into a poker room or a casino, you can bring cash uh, into 
meet with the cage and they will convert your cash into chips. And the chips are what you play with at the table and to uh, gamble and play poker. Uh, you can do this at a house game. You can also, you know, do this at a casino. There's various poker rooms and, you know, social clubs and lounges throughout the, you know, world. I'm going to show you some, you know, ways to find the nearest poker room to you. But for now, we're going to focus on the traditional color layout of how cash game chips play. There are cash games, you know, live live games they're called and then there's tournament games tournament has you know more colorful chips at uh higher increments you know a one million dollar chip and not to say that that can't be a cash chip but in a traditional cash layout live game white chips are one dollar red chips are five dollars green chips are worth 25 dollars and black chips are worth a hundred dollars. This is the most common layout of how chips, you know, play. But different, every room can make whatever color, whatever increment, whatever value uh, combination the, to each their own. But I'll be showing you guys the uh, traditional, most common ways. Because while this is going to be difficult, you know, starting at the end, reverse engineering, I'm going to be trying to make it as easy as I can uh, as we go through this process. So we're not going to use black chips at the moment. The deck is not even important. The cards, what they are, not important. All that matters is as I try to teach you how this land, lay of the land works is going to be chips, mathematical, uh, important only. To calculate the pot, the formula is the previous bet times three plus the drag if there is one sometimes there's not a drag sometimes there is but back to the beginning the previous bet times three this is a formula and if you can get the formula down then you insert the you know variables into these spots here's the pot Ten dollars. The formula is the previous bet times three plus the drag if there is one plus what's in the middle. So perfect example. You're playing they're playing a what's called a one three game. This is how we're going to do it. We're gonna start with one three blind structures, you know, one dollar, three dollars, cards get dealt. And now it's three to play. There's no such thing as a free flop, you know, to play poker. There's ten dollars in the pot. And the buttons here means it's this guy's turn to act. Okay. He bets five. This guy says pot. It's going to be the previous bet times three. That's fifteen. The previous bet times three plus the drag. There is no drag. Okay, the drag is a trail of trips behind the previous bet, but because this is the only bet, it's the previous bet times three plus what's in the middle. So 15 plus what's in the middle. The new bet is 25. So this guy bets 25. This guy calls 25. This guy says pot. Now you gotta do the previous bet times three plus the drag plus what's in the middle to give you the new formula for what his new bet is, okay? So it's the previous bet times three, 75, plus the drag, 100, 105, plus what's in the middle, 115. The new bet is 115. This guy bets 115. Boom. This guy folds. This guy folds. This is dead money. Now something interesting happens here. And I'm going to show you two thing, important principles to think about as we go here. So, this guy says pot. Well, you could be doing the math. You could be doing, you know, 115 times 3. That's... 345 
plus 25, that's 370, plus what's in the middle, that's three, the new bet is 385, and you could try to spit that out, or you could look at his stack and be like, dude, you don't have, you know, 385, you're all in. If he's got less than, you know, obviously whatever the pot size bet is, and he's saying pot, you don't need to sit there trying to do math when you can tell that this guy's just all in. So, this guy says pot. Instead of doing the math, you just say, oh, you're all in. All right, so he's all in, all right? However, let's just say this guy has a lot more chips to play with, okay? So, hypothetically, this is his stack. And now he says pot. Well, now he's got more than whatever the formula is. But the previous bet times three, 345. Plus 25, 370, plus 15. The new bet is 385. So you, so he would be counting out. Dun, dun, 375, 385. That's the new bet. This guy folds, and whatever happens, happens. But the reason I'm bringing that up, okay, is because of this. This gets confusing, and I wanted to get it right out there right away. When this guy says pot, this, his bet in front of him is not a part of the drag. It's not a part of the equation. He could have $100 out here, or $5 out here, or $1,000 out here. Whatever his bet in front of him is, is not a part of the formula, okay? So that was very confusing to me when I first started to learn this stuff. So you might be thinking, wait a minute, it's, it's this times three plus 50 plus, you know, 15. No, it's this times three plus this plus this, okay? This is not included in the formula. And that's specifically why I moved chips over to, you know, break that down for you. Whatever's in front of this original better is not a part to figure out the new pot size bet. So some of you might be following along and being like, oh yeah, 115 times three, that's relatively easy to, to multiply by three, that's 345. And some of you might be like, whoa, how'd you get that number so quickly? And it's not a terribly hard formula, but the second principle is going to go into figuring out how to quickly get three times a number, okay? 3x the previous bet. I'm gonna be sh showing you in the second principle how to start memorizing some numbers and uh, using a thousand different ways to get to the same number, really, but a nice little shortcut I've learned to be able to take a rather obscure number. You know, let's say this was, he bets the pot, right? And that number was 385, so, He's, he's got 385 out here, it's too much. 385, now let me get my calculator really quick. If this guy's got like a ton of black chips in front of him and you know, there's a ton of money on the table. And this guy, now we're to say pot, and now you gotta do 385 times three. I can tell you right now, that's three, six, nine, 10, 1155, 1155 plus 115 plus that. But 385 times three, 1155 is my guess. Times three, 1155. So the cards are dealt out. People are ready to see the first three cards called the flop and there's $20 in the pot. One other thing I wanted to break down, let's say you're playing a one three game, you know, blinds are one three and everyone calls three and well, in this case, there'd only be $15 in the pot. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. But if there was another player, you know, in this game, a little short stack, little fella over here kicking it, there'd be $18 in the pot. In cash games, they round up to the nearest, you know, hold, hold you know, zero or five, okay? So really there's what's considered to be $20 in the pot. 
in tournaments they do true pot and in other rooms and other things they do true pot you have to know exactly precisely what is in there but you're more often than not going to come into a position where you're rounding up to the nearest zero or five here's eighteen dollars in the pot which is really twenty okay and this guy goes and throws out a bet like that you say twenty you can't bet fifty it's a, you can only bet what's up into the pot all right so twenty so he bets 20, and if you're following along, and this guy says pot, it would be the previous bet times three, 20, 40, 60, plus what's in the middle, 80. The new bet's 80. So he bets do, 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 $80, and it goes and folds around, and it comes back to this guy, and he says pot. Well, you can do two things, all right? <laughs> you do two things. You could figure out eight times three, that's 240 plus what's in the middle, and we don't count this, if you recall. This is why I'm doing this. Two reasons why I'm doing this. You could be like, uh, 240 plus 20, $260 in the new pot. Well, this dude ain't got no damn $260, bro. So you just tell, you know, but the players are wise enough to know that he, he'll just, you know, go like that and he's got the guy covered. But you may occasionally run into a situation where dude bets the pot and uh, dude clearly has this guy covered. So you just say, you got this guy covered, you know, you're all in, whatever. I w wanted to tell you that for two specific reasons. One, again, a reminder, this doesn't count. 8, 16, 24, or 8 times 3, which is 24. Or, you know, add a zero, 80 times three, 240. 260 is the new bet. This dude don't got no 260. So he goes, you know, all in for uh, 125 and plus his whites or whatever. So here's another example. There's three players in the hand playing for $3, which is $9 in the pot, because they each called $3, all right? This guy bets five bucks. This guy calls five bucks. This guy calls five bucks. All right, we're gonna see the next card. So now you do 15 plus, you know, what's in the middle, 10. So now there's $25 in the pot, all right? Good, very good, you're doing great. So now the next card comes out. This guy bets 10, this guy calls 10. This guy bets 20. This guy says pot. The previous bet times three. Plus the drag. This is the drag. His bet don't count. 60, 70, plus 25. 95. The new bet is $95. This guy folds. So now you take his dead money. Now there's $35 in the pot, in the middle, all right? Now, if this guy were to say pot, you'd be like, oh, he's got you covered because you can see he doesn't have, you know, whatever, and if he makes a pot size bet, he can't cover it, so he's got him covered, so, you know, they're all in. Let's say this guy has some more to play with, and this guy ends up calling the $95. Well, now you know there's 35 in the middle of his dead money, because before this next card comes out, you have to know what's in the middle. Before each card comes out, you got to know what's in the middle. Before the flop, before the turn, before the river, each street, you have to know what's in the middle at, you know, at all times. So 95 times 2, you can figure that out by having it memorized or knowing that you know 90 times 2 is 180 and then to add another 5 and a 5 would make it 190 or you could do 200 you know it rounded up to 200 and be like, oh it's 200 but there's a nickel missing so there's a dime there's 10 missing so 200 minus the 10 okay that's 190 total you can probably reasonably get to understand that 95 times 2 or 95 plus 95 is going to be 190. What's cool about this is as you're playing at home, you can check this out yourself and be like, oh, look, it's 150, 170, 180, 190. Oh, nice. So you can literally be, you know, 
counting the chips based on their color and understand that's 100, that's 150, plus 40, so 90. However you wanna do it, there's a thousand ways to get to the same thing and we'll talk more about that later. 190 going in the middle plus the 35. 190 plus 35 is 225. So now there's 225 in the middle. This guy, the, the river comes out, this guy says pot. You have to be able to say right then and there, 225. Bink, 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 bink. And then this guy calls and whoever wins, wins. So now in this example, there was like a preflop raise to some kind and everyone's in there and there's approximately $30 in the middle. This guy comes out and he bets 10. We're gonna do a lot of hypotheticals here. Do a little like, you know, slew of trying to get this formula, you know, understandable in your brain. So this guy bets 10, this guy says pot. 10 times three, the previous bet times three, 30 plus 30, that's 60. So that's the new bet, all right? But let's just say he didn't do that. Let's just say he called. And then this guy calls. And then this guy says, pot, that's 30 plus 10 plus 10, 50 plus 30. The new bet is 80. All right. Yep. 30, 50, 80. Yep. The new bet is 80. But let's just say he didn't do that. This guy ends up making it 25 instead. He says, raise 25. And then this guy makes it 50, all right? This guy, he short stacks, so he folds. And then this guy says, pop. 50 times three, 5, 10, 15, plus 25, 175, 185, 195, that don't count. 195 plus 30, 225 is the new bet. The previous bet times three, 150, 175, 185, 195, plus 30, uh, 225 is the new bet. But let's just say he didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> so he just calls 50, this guy calls 50, and this guy calls 50, and this guy calls 50. So well, now you got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 250, plus 30. The new pot as we go to the next street is 280. There's $280 in here. 250 plus the original 30 is 280 dollars in there the new card comes out this guy bets 75 this guy says pot you'd say well you're all in because you know that 225 plus 300 you know that's over 500 he don't got 500 here but let's just say he calls 75 all right this guy folds this guy says pot it, he would have them both covered, but you know, in an invisible situation where he doesn't have, everyone has enough chips to play with. We know there's 280 in here. We would do 75 times three, plus the previous bet, that's 225 plus 75 to get to 300. But let me show you a shortcut right now. In a situation like this, where there's a drag, and there's only one bet ahead of it. Instead of doing 75 times three plus 75, it's the same thing as doing 75 times four or doing 75 times two and then doubling it. That's the traditional way that I, you know, figured this situation out. It would be 75 times two, which is 150, and then that doubled gives you this com combination of 300, which is the same thing as doing the previous bet of 225 plus 75. That's 300. So I'm kind of like skipping a step by doing this doubled and then that number doubled. So the key fundamental things to have memorized or and remember coming out of this video in principle is the pot always rounds up to the nearest zero or five. If there were $23 in there, it'd actually be $25. So you round up to the nearest zero or five to know what's in the pot. 
you know, at all times essentially before each card comes out. And the bet is, or the formula is the previous bet times three. This guy bet. Da, 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 da. This guy says pot. The previous bet times three. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, plus 25, 95 is the new wager. There's $25 in here. This guy bets 25. This guy says pot. Again, you could do the previous bet times three. There is no drag. Plus what's in the middle. That's 75 plus 25, that's 100. Or what I just had gone over, you, because it's essentially you taking this number, multiplying it by four. You know, times three plus the same number is th that times four or this doubled and then that number doubled. It's an easier way for me to personally go about it. But you can do 25 times four, but you can also do, you know, 50 times two to get to the same number. And now the new bet is 100. This guy folds. This guy, this guy folds. This guy says pot. That's one, two, three hundred plus this plus this. 325, 350. The new bet is 350. The previous bet times three plus the drag plus what's in the middle. That's the formula for calculating the pot when someone says pot. And if it gets back to this guy, all this in front of him, and everyone else had, you know, black chips and higher denomination chips and, you know, money to play with. If he says pot, you do 350 times three plus 100. You don't include this. This is the drag. This is not the drag. He's making the, he's making the new bet this is not included in the drag. 350 times three. The only reason I know what 350 times three, it's 1050, is because I know what 35 times three is. And the only reason I know what 35 times three is, is because I memorized it. And that's what we're gonna go over in the next principle, is memorizing these smaller increments of five times three to ultimately get to uh, 1050, 1150, 1175 should be the new wager from homie over here with the black stack. 350 times 3 plus 100 plus 25. 1175. Pretty sure that's the number I said. Ow! 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 To which case you'd be like, oh, you got everyone covered, so you're all in. <laughs> you don't have to do this math, but. Yeah, that's gonna be the first principle, yo. But if he's not all in, make sure you give him, you know, the correct amount. Don't be letting, making him shortchange that. Eleven seventy-five. Eleven seventy-five. No discount. You tell him. I hope you got a little bit of uh, insight of where this is kind of going. And I just want you to know when a hand ends, and you know that guy bets eleven seventy-five, and he's got a couple callers, and you ship him a pot that's like over two thousand dollars, and then he's like, "Hey, thanks for dealing that, buddy." That's $50 of yours, bink, right in your pocket for about two minutes worth of your work, just sitting on your butt, uh, doing some math in your head in a nice, you know, hopefully air conditioned environment, hopefully a nice vibe, spacious floor uh, with a nice team of co -wos. or better yet. Oh, thanks buddy. Oh, nice, thank you buddy, $100. Uh, that'll, uh, that's just, you know, I wonder what the next hand is going to give me. So that's the first principle. And we're going to get into the second principle here shortly in a future video where I'm going to show you the breakdown of the numbers to memorize to make your math easier. And if you can memorize this series of numbers, you know, What's 65 times three? Oh, it's 195. What's 95 times three is 285. What's, you know, 45 times three is 135. What's 60 times three, that's 180, you know? Uh, if you can memorize these increments, then it's going to make the more challenging stuff of like, uh, what's 475 times three? Uh, it's 4812, that's 1425. Fondue declare. <laughs> and uh, 
Another thing I wanted to just break down is like, if there's $75 in the pot and there is no previous bet, there's no drag, then, you know, a guy says pot, then the bet is the pot, you know? There's seven players to the flop, there's $80 in the middle, cards come out, this dude says pot, 80, and he bets 80. Repot, okay, that's eight times three plus what's in the middle, or eight times four, which is 320, or, you know, 80 times two, 16, 160, that doubled, 320. You know, there's so many ways to get to the end result answer, but in a situation where there is no previous bet, there is no drag, and someone says, and there's like a lot in there, and someone says, pot, 480 is, in, is the bet, all right? So, Thank you guys so for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial of mine. And I hope you come back for a future uh, uh, as the summer crash course to get you prepared to go audition and start uh, throwing some cards around in conjunction with if you're an OG Disturbed Reality fan, you'll probably be very comfortable with a deck of cards in your hand already at this point. So why not? Be, find a nice consistent way where you're not s digging and searching for gigs to perform magic in you know less than ideal situations versus a nice consistent three days four days five days six days seven days a week you know maybe multiple rooms you know just grinding and making you know a hundred dollars a hand if you're so fortunate uh, not every hand but you can't you know you gotta push the right pot to the right person other little things that I'll be sharing with you as this course unfolds. In the meantime, subscribe, hit the bell button, because yeah, these uploads will be sporadic. I won't be having like a schedule or a set release time or day when they'll be coming. Much love. Come back for the next principle where we will be learning how to memorize and get the hard math down pat. 480 which I think is uh, 1440. There you go. There you go.